Yo guys, don't you just love a good coincidence? Let me share with you a quick one that recently happened to me. So, not too long ago, YouTube creator Michael Reese put up a video about using a drone with a program. And I thought, wow, that was pretty cool. I wish I could do something cool like that. Wait, why can't I? And so, I hit him up and asked him for some drone advice, and he gave me the drone that he used ordered it off Amazon, tried it out, and boy was my experience bad. <laughs> I originally wanted to make a Grand Theft Auto top-down camera simulator thingy where you just place the drone at the right height, then you tell it to follow you. But I couldn't figure out how to get it to go higher than like 10 feet or so. <laughs> we live and we learn, folks. Contemplating if I want to continue with this research and do something else, that's when IBM jumped into my inbox. Excuse me? Creators of the Watson AI computer that beat legendary Jeopardy! champions in 2011? That IBM wants to work with Lil O Me? <laughs> what has life became, man? Anywho, they hit me with a really interesting email, and it read as follows. Yo Jabrals, we have a riveting challenge for you. We see you like to do some AI stuff on your channel. Well, we'd like to send you a DJI Tello drone and challenge you to embed it with AI using IBM Watson Studio and Watson Cloud before insert date here. What do you say? Are you up for the challenge? Lads, if that isn't a sign this drone episode was meant to be, then I don't know what would be. IBM, challenge accepted. Now, challenges like this are right up my alley because I have zero experiences with coding drones. I barely have any experience with coding hardware, period. And the thought of all the learning that I'm gonna have to go through, ugh, nothing excites me more, man. Now, my first order of business was to wait, right. We're stepping out of the software world this week and into the physical world. So, ain't no install a couple of libraries and just start coding today, folks. We can't do anything until our physical tools show up. However, in the meantime, we can pick up some new ideas. After watching some videos on YouTube, I now know the Tello can go up pretty high. But this drone didn't have a camera pointing straight down. So my original inspiration is completely out the window for the moment. And back to the drawing board I went. And I ended up coming up with a few good ideas. Some a bit too ambitious, but others that were just right. Guys? I want you to meet the arrow selfie. The idea for the arrow selfie is really simple actually. How about the idea of pulling out a little drone from your pocket, turning it on, it flies up, gets the right shot framed, then takes a photo or records you. Now, how dreamy is that? Plus, this will also solve the problem that I have not being able to find someone willing to film for my videos. <laughs> I'll finally be able to go outside again. Arrow selfie it is. Now all that's left is just to get started by... Oh yeah, this is a hardware episode, and the hardware isn't here yet. So, see you tomorrow, I guess? Finally, some days later, and the drone showed up, and instantly I took it out to the field to peep some of its limitations. And, yeah, this thing is tight. Powerful Tello. So now, my very first step was to, on a high level, map out a checklist to complete this challenge. So let's see. First, I need to figure out how to output to the Tello. Then I need to figure out some drone limitations. Then I need to collect data. Then train a classifier using IBM's Watson Studio. Then implement that classifier using IBM's Watson Cloud. Then at this point, I can refine and retune my Arrow Selfie classifier and algorithm until it works good enough for me. And now that I have my checklist all mapped out, let the challenge officially begin. First on the list was to figure out how to output to the Tello. Should be easy enough, but there is a little caveat with that. IBM wanted me to use an IDE called Node Red, which was a visual scripting language. <laughs> visual scripting. Scratch. Look at how you've poisoned the world. Guys, 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 relax. I'm only kidding, okay? If visual scripting is your jam, I do not discriminate. So long as you're able to achieve your end result, you're a programmer to me. I just personally prefer traditional lines of code scripting, but I'll be honest, I really enjoyed learning what I did using Node Red. I mean, check this stuff out. This tabletop, this drone, can you do it? Go forward, come on. Yeah, no, there's not enough. See what happens, come on, you got this. Oh, 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 
Oh, no, my baby. Are you ready, mad lads? Here we go. This is it. This is it. Come on, baby. Bring home the bacon. Oh, look at that. Look at that double rainbow all the way. All was fun. Everything so far was running really smoothly. And I thought I was about to be done in only a day or two. But then, right on time, I hit my first snag. I understood how to output to the Tello. Check. And doing so in the process, I learned a good amount about the drone's limitations. Also check. But me sending a sequence of outputs isn't really autonomy. I need to create an algorithm that outputs depending on some input. Which brings up the questions. What inputs will I be using? And probably more importantly, how can I access those inputs using Node-RED? Being a complete noob with this visual scripting stuff, I hit up IBM's technical expert John Wallachy for some answers. Who, by the way, has a GitHub repo that has been a huge help up until this point. And he shared with me that he was still in the middle of working on an interface between Watson Cloud and Node-RED. So, that left me with two options. Either A, I bust my ass first trying to learn Node-RED, and then figure out how I can make this functional, or I switch to a more traditional language called Python and use OpenCV because that's just what I'm more comfortable with. And I think it's clear what option I chose. Work smarter, not harder, folks. Candy ain't eating itself, you know. Scrapped Node-RED, and progress accelerated dramatically. No more guesswork, I had full documentation and intelligence back on my side. Time to get to work. Now, a developer by the name of Daimia Fuentes actually did a lot of the dirty work and created a really nice Python library to communicate with the Tello. And this thing has an insanely nice real time response rate. Daimia, shouts to you, friend. So, starting over on our checklist output to the Tello, check. Drone limitations, also check. Now, I can train my classifier using Watson Studio. And now this step is actually really simple. In fact, I'm really impressed with how simple IBM has made this process using Watson Studio. After registering and all that jazz, you create a project, which in our case, we're creating a visual recognition project. Then we create a bunch of classes, which I've conveniently mapped out for the arrow selfie as shown here. Move back looks like this, move forward looks like that, hold position, go up, down, rotate left, right, and search for subject in case I'm not in frame. Now, I've heard claims that you don't need a large data set in order to train a confident classifier. In fact, it says right here that you only need a minimum of 10 images for the model to get an idea what to classify. But, unless things have dramatically changed since I've last done convolutional neural net research, I am skeptical but i'll play along hell less time for me to invest fired up the drone using the mobile app and just started recording a bunch of different angles and conditions that i could later extract frames from after getting all the footage i needed i used ffmpeg from the terminal to extract every frame from the video and now with thousands of stills i sifted through them to find at least 10 representative frames in each classification separated them out then uploaded them to their respective classifier on watson studio and then i started training with the simple click of a button ibm very cool now while that was training i recorded new footage that was not in the training data set which will let me know how accurate it really is when using unseen data and i even recorded some data under new conditions like being in a hallway and being without a jacket and headwear just to see how it'd do extracted those frames and once training was complete i tested my test data set against the classifier using watson studio and the results were actually not as bad as i was expecting i mean not really that good but a great start for such a low sample size so train my classifier check kind of now let's be straight this classifier is not good enough to embed into my tello it just might become a glitched out homing missile trying to poke my eye out or harmfully fly into the wall or something crazy like that so from here two things must happen one, I have to improve my classifier, meaning like collecting more varied data and different conditions and whatnot, but I really want to sit down and invest like a whole day or two just thinking about how my data should be encoded and collected, instead of just blindly collecting data as I previously did. Because for starters, I'm thinking about downscaling my idea just to get it to work first, which means limit the arrow selfie to only work within my office. So there's that. But two, 
I also need some better way to tell the accuracy of my classifier. Now, there's a few ways that I could go about doing this, but I think the best and most efficient way to do this is to classify the Tello's camera feed in real time using IBM's Watson Cloud. Because then, I can just fly the Tello around the room and gauge in real time how well it's doing. Which, would you look at that, is actually the next step on the checklist. And so, I started there. But, that is when I realized my next big snag. You see, in order to send output to the Tello, it isn't anything like my first robot build project. Shameless link to that is in the description. I don't have the luxury of writing a nice Python script and uploading that script to the drone, for the drone to then have all of its instructions internally. Instead, you have to connect to the drone's Wi-Fi and then send messages to it for it to do something. Which brings us to my problem. Now, in order to use IBM's Watson Cloud Service to get results from my classifier I just trained, I need to be connected to my router's Wi-Fi. So, how can I connect to both the Tello drone that isn't connected to the internet and my router that is? Unsure how to solve this problem, I again contacted John Wallachy for some solution ideas. And he shared with me his solution, which was to connect my computer to the internet using an ethernet cable, leaving the Wi-Fi open to connect to the Tello. Well, of course, why didn't I think of that? Looked around for an ethernet cable, somehow easily found one, plugged it in, and got it working flawlessly. But then, guys, my time ran out. This was as far as I was able to get before the deadline. Guys, I failed the challenge. However, this challenge really intrigues me. And if you are interested in seeing how far we can get with the arrow selfie, let me know in the comments or using the poll in the top right corner. I honestly wouldn't mind following this up with a part two. However, if you want to get yourself a free teledrone from IBM, well, listen up. As I'm sure you're already aware by this point, this video is sponsored by IBM. You just watched my adventure on trying to tackle this challenge, but IBM has extended this challenge out to all of you as well. Well, only if you live in the US or Canada, unfortunately. But for those of you that do, if you sign up for IBM's Coder program, literally as easy as that, you're entered to win one out of 2,000 free drones they're giving away. And these drones also come with a lot of open source example code so you won't be dead in the water with getting started. As well as IBM offers a community of developer advocates and other like-minded devs that can help you out when you get stuck. So lads, what do you have to lose? You have until December 16th to enter, so make sure to get on that. More details of this will be linked on the blog post in the description. But if you want to enter, visit ibm.biz slash ibm drone drop to get started. Link to that is at the top of the description. Thanks to IBM for supporting developers like you and I, and lads, happy drone dev. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Again, let me know in the comments or using the poll if you're interested in seeing a part 2. This has been so much fun so far, and I can't believe I get to wake up and try and solve fun challenges like this. Thanks to IBM for the support. But other than that, it's time to bake. Please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon to be notified for when I upload the next video. And also, please can follow me on Twitter and Instagram for exclusive sneak peeks. They say my Twitter is like a box of chocolates. You just don't know what you might get. <laughs> But lastly, if you're interested in supporting my work beyond YouTube, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon for patronage. I have some really cool rewards coming soon, and shout to these top patrons for their support. So much love to you guys. But, alright guys, that's all for this week, but I hope to see you next week. But, whatever the case may be, remember to always feed your curiosity.